Hey guys, welcome to part two of my box truck adventure. In the first episode, you saw me drive to Odenville, Alabama, where I got this truck running after seven months of storage and drove it 200 miles back to Nashville. When I was there, I didn't show you guys the coolest and the worst part of this truck. I'll show that to you now. Well, this is the worst part, the condition of the roll door. You can see the aluminum sheeting is peeled back and the wood got damaged and some of the rollers popped off. But let me show you what's quite possibly the coolest part. Uh, it's got a lift gate that's huge so this is a 2500 pound lift gate perfect for getting the engines transmissions and uh, slip shear roller and all the heavy equipment into the back that was why i ended up driving all the way to alabama to find this there were a few local that i could have gone with but lift gate's going to make the moving a lot easier now let's get this door fixed all right guys, this is what it's looking like from the inside. I'm not really sure what happened that caused this. Uh, on the outside, you can see that the bottom two sections were all damaged and that this has gone down a little bit too far because we've got this gap at the top. My plan is to hook up these ratchet straps to the bottom rollers on each side and then just kind of ratchet, 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 and then hopefully it'll slowly go back up to where the tension spring can get it at least, you know, part of the way up. And that point, then I can put the bottom rollers on and figure out if I want to build two new sections from scratch. Or what I might end up doing is do like a bottom section that mounts somehow and then have the top where it just rolls down and then latches to it. So like the bottom section would be either steel or wood or a combination of the two that would be lockable and removable and then have the top part just latch into it. And the reason for that is because really this is it's just a one-way trip that I need to make with this. The only thing that's important is waterproofness and safety. As long as I can lock it up and it's not going to be getting everything wet, I don't care. This isn't a vehicle where the back roll door is going to open and close 15 times a day because I'm out delivering stuff. So I don't know if this is going to work at all. I'm going to set up the camera and then you guys can watch me see if I can get this door open. As of right now, I don't have a plan B. So here's hoping. All right, I did find an issue. Nothing that's not solvable, but because these bottom flaps went oh, boing flip like that, we've now got the tensioner spring is basically almost all the way up. So uh, there's no more tension helping me pull it up. What I have to do is lock this piece in and then I have to take these, bend them back down and then I guess figure out what the next step is. Huh. All right, here's the plan. When I pull on this right now, you can see the springs are both pulling down. I mean, there's a lot of tension, but it seems like the spring and everything there is working fine. I'm gonna hook up a ratchet strap to wherever that cable latches to on each side, and then I'm gonna pull it down and attach it to the vehicle so that I can then have just the cable on its own sitting here. So that'll release all the tension from the spring. The whole door is being held up right now by these ratchet straps, so we're good to go there. The plan is I'll remove the bottom two panels that are damaged and replace it with a single panel that I'll go to the store and just pick up some nice plywood for. I'll see if I can coat it with uh, some aluminum sheeting that I have lying around so it kind of matches it. And then we'll just have a single panel at the bottom instead of a dual panel. We'll roll up. That's, that's the idea. Hopefully there's not too much tension and hopefully the ratchet strap holds them okay. We'll find out. All right, let me show you guys something very dangerous that I'm gonna have to do. So, I had to use these old turnbuckles to attach past the ferrule on this cable because I couldn't get anything into the proper loop right there. So what I have to do next is actually cut this bolt with the grinder so that I can pull the bolt off so that I can then put, where is it? One of these through that loop and I can actually secure it better. But it's a little bit on the sketchy side, so maybe just don't try this at home. All right, the next step is to drill out all of these rivets so that I can remove the bottom two pieces and then use them as a template to make a new one. Woohoo! <laughs> that 
a little closer than I thought. Well, I'm hoping that this turns out to be as simple as it seems. I'm just gonna replace these two boards with one board, maybe skin it, maybe not. I'm gonna head over to Lowe's, pick up some wood and uh, maybe some carriage bolts. We're gonna be eliminating the center hinge because I'm missing two of them, but I'll still have these two on the end, so I'll have two extra hinges. And then I'm missing one of these little rollers. So since I'm eliminating those two, I will have one extra roller. And then my thought is, get it installed and then grease up all of the little rollers, reattach the uh, cables and we should be good to go. So let's get to it. Luckily, I had a couple of large pieces of aluminum in my scrap bin, so with the help of my wife and my shear, I was able to get a piece cut to size, and then I cut two smaller pieces and then used the bender to bend them into kind of an end cap to hopefully add a little bit of rigidity to the bottom and some weatherproofing to keep that wood from rotting in the same way that it rotted on the old door. Guys, the sun has gone down, but I'm still working on this thing. It looks good from the outside. Let me show you a couple little problems I ran into on the inside here. Now, when you see these little rollers here, they look like they're pushed too far this direction, and I'm realizing now that I didn't put in a little groove for how it kind of bubbles out for the axle to slide through there. So I'm gonna have to remove this, cut the metal a little bit, put in a little groove. I might actually need to mark out right here and shave down the wood just a hair. And I saw up here, you see it's kind of the same thing. It's been kind of cut into to allow a relief for the axle on the hinge. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing right here. I might have a good router bit, so I can just route that and make it nice and clean. But it's just gonna have to be bing, 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 and then it should be good to go. All right, so I ended up not using a router. Because this is plywood, you can see how it's laminated. So I just used the grinder to kind of dig in a little bit and then I popped it out with the chisel. I did the same thing on the bottom and I was able to get those latches in nice and tight. The next step is gonna be unstrapping the roll door on each side and then letting it come down so that I can then attach the hinges right here and right here. Now this thing is quite heavy, so I'm gonna set the camera up on the tripod because this could be terrifying. Alright guys, well it's a beautiful morning and sadly I did not get this door done last night. I probably could have, but we headed out to Columbia to take a look at an RV and that cost me a little bit of time. Now these little brackets here, these are the spring tension brackets that mount right here on the bottom. When I was removing this one yesterday, you could see I went a little bit overboard with the grinder and dug into it. So I used a wire wheel to clean this up. I'm gonna run a weld bead right there and then smooth that down just to make it stronger. And then I'll get these mounted on the bottom. And then I'm gonna use probably a high lift jack in the center here to get this jacked up high enough so that I can then attach them and then we'll see if it works. Much better. Say hi to everybody. Say right there, hi. say. Well, this latch and lock came out pretty good, if I do say so myself. I've got some three quarter inch weather stripping that I'm gonna be installing on the bottom because there is just this tiny little gap. So I'll show you guys how this thing opens up, get that weather stripping installed, and we'll uh, latch it up for good. All right, well, it's all done. The only issue, the wood was bowed 
just a hair and I knew that and that's why I had it bow this way rather than out and so I do have to pull it in just a little bit not the end of the world the other thing is uh, the gap there's just maybe a quarter of an inch still on the bottom so I should have moved this latch up just a little bit but I matched up the holes with the existing pieces over here and I gotta say it's a huge improvement at least so I'm very happy unfortunately now that this is done that means I need to start working on the rest of the vehicle Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.